Dear God, please enter my soul and speak to my tongue to give the Jews the perfect message that they need right now. And the message that comes to my heart right away jumps up and it screams to be heard. Is that we must stop sinning against God, against each other. You have to look at it like we're one big family. And when a father sees his children bickering and fighting over stupidity, money and trivial things like this that come and go that vanish like dust in the wind, it frustrates the father. And the father gets angry, the father gets upset, the father gets let down, the father gets disappointed, Dalel, just like Delilah brought down Samson, I like that, I appreciate you giving me that, just like you're about to give me that, why did God not hear the cries of Israel when they cried out to him to save him, you know what, to save them, you know why, because they didn't listen to the cries of the prophets, nor the cries of the poor, it's all measure for measure, you see strict judgment by God and you judge God? Judge the sinners, not judging God. It's like this one preacher, yo, this dude had me rolling, yo, inside edition, Kenneth Copeland, go check it. And I'll put it to some good little music to give it more of like a flair. Not the people, baby. Not the people. <laughs> because he said that he wouldn't fly coach. Because he doesn't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. So she ran up on him with a microphone out of nowhere. And goes, what, what did you mean by that comment? And he goes, not the people, baby. <laughs> Y'all so slick the way these dudes talk. And then she goes, how much did you pay for that jet from Tyler Perry? He goes, I paid. And then you have to see his face start contorting. And he's like all embarrassed. He turned like five different colors. And then he goes, give me a second, please. <laughs> Dear God, help me. He was like, oh, yo, I don't even know how to explain it, but you got to go watch this video and watch him try to explain why he lives a life of luxury and why being a prosperity preacher is sanctioned by the Bible. Just go watch the way this dude talks. Scary, scary, scary. You see that there is a spirit lingering out there that will enter the heart of the people, cause them to idol worship, cause them to commit adultery. You think a guy who has three adorable little girls is going to go cheat on his wife and risk all that. Happens all the time. How? The power of the Satan, bro. He gains so much power from our sins. That's why every time we sin, he gains more power. That's why we have to do mitzvot to strip him of his power. You understand? Hashem is watching the whole time, bro. He's watching me right now in this room where I am. I'm not even happy here, yo. But I suck it up and I know it's all from God and I'll wait. And... You can see why, you know, you tell these people not to knock on the door a million times and they knock right in the middle of the video. But you see, I was already prepared for it. It's all love, bro. It's all love. You must know that God is running the show. You must know that God is always watching and looking to see how you're going to react. And when you pass the test like I just passed right now, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing getting back to the subject at hand and the subject is like this so when the father sees his children fighting and bickering it upsets him it annoys him now he sees exactly what goes on so if one kid is oppressing the other kid obviously he's gonna see that and it's gonna be automatically din row deaf that's what i love about hashem you know it's din row deaf he automatically sides with the victim not like this world where everybody sides with the criminal. Oh, no, no, but you don't understand. But he was molested as a kid. That's why he molested. And then this and that. They're going to give you 5,000 reasons to justify his sin. I like what they said about what I read about Jeremiah the prophet. He said that the situation he was in, having to watch the destruction of Beit HaMikdash and prophesize about it and be ridiculed by the people was so heart-wrenching he said it was like as if he was the coin gadol coin priest and a woman a sota came and he had to do the ceremony of sota and he found out it was his mother or like a father who god forbid lost his son on his wedding day crazy things like this yo things that would twist the heart up and really hurt you and hashem does that sometimes unfortunately you see a lot of pain he kills babies yo 
He kills babies. Why? Because he's mean and wicked? Absolutely not, because he's the most righteous. Because this baby committed sins and had to come back in the next world, suffer and die. And the parents that had him also had to suffer because they had a loss. Hashem connects everything. I don't want to say killing two birds with one stone, but if you're really honest about life, 420 people get into a tube, fly somewhere, it crashes, and everyone dies. Hashem brought everybody into that tube. What do you think it's coincidence that one person in that plane was, wasn't supposed to die died? No. And if there was somebody in that plane that wasn't supposed to die, miraculously out of everybody, you would be saved. And you've seen it because it's happened. Just like in a hurricane, yo. Where you see a bunch of houses right on the coastal, right on the coast, and then one house will just be fine, and all the other houses are destroyed. Or in a wildfire, they'll try to explain it. No, no, the wind blew at this angle, so at the last second it went around. And can explain it or however you want to explain it, bro. The bottom line is if you're clever, God is showing you signs that He's all over the place. The moon, the way it waxes and it wanes, the sun, the way it gives life. Yo, everything He did is to show you, yo, I'm around and watching, and yet. My nation still continues with its sins. Gay pride parade in Yushalayim. Women on the beach in Tel Aviv half naked, not even care. A lot of them mothers mixing with the Goyim. A lot of black dudes from New York and America come down there to play ball. The Jewish girls mix with them. They mix with the Arabs. That's why you have 30% of the Abbas terrorists are Jews. These are women that went and went with Arabs. Jewish women that went with Arabs had kids. Now all their kids are Jews. And they're the ones committing the crimes and they say that they go, they're the most extreme because they want to show everybody, because everybody in the neighborhood knows they're from a mixed marriage. So they put them down, ah, you're not really one of us. So they go to commit even more crimes to show how much they are like them. But the fact is they're born to a Jewish mother. They're Jews, Jews attacking Jews, just like it said in the prophecy of, of Zechariah, if I'm not mistaken, that Judah will fight against Israel. There you go, you see it right there, live today. Dear God, have mercy on every little girl and little boy in Eretz Yisrael right now that has to run into a shelter. And I say little boy and little girl, not the adults, because unfortunately the adults, it's for sins, man. I don't even like saying it like that, yo. But these little kids, man. Ay, ay, ay. Of course, if they have to suffer through it, also they're guilty of something from their last life, so they came to have even this. I mean, it's very deep to talk about, bro. But let's make it real simple, tie it all in with a bow. The suffering that you see is all for the sins. And sometimes the parents cause sins and it causes the children to suffer. Doesn't mean the children didn't deserve it. They did. But you just see it's a cyclic pattern of sin and a sickness that takes over a man's soul to make him act in a way contrary to God's will. If you love God... You will always do his will. If you love God, you'll always stick to him. If you love God, you'll step up and say that the baby that's born blind is blind because of sins in his past life. You wouldn't say it to the mother or to the baby, but in your heart, you would know that's the justice of God. And you feel mercy for him and you have compassion on him and you help him and you serve him for his whole life till he dies. No contradiction. Hashem will reward you for that. You see, that's what makes Hashem so amazing, yo. Is that He does His calculations so precise and He knows exactly who needs to be suffering, who doesn't, who's going to not suffer here to suffer there. Who's going to get punished here to cleanse their sins so they don't suffer there. You understand? He has all these calculations already made. But you have to decide what your future is going to be. Are you going to keep breaking Shabbat? Are you going to keep turning a cold shoulder to God? Are you going to keep acting in an arrogant way where you show no appreciation or gratefulness for the things that you have? Are you going to be jealous? Are you going to be shameful? Are you going to walk in the street half naked to gain attention from other men that might be married to make your sin doubled and magnified in the house of heaven? Is that what you want to do? Then go ahead and do it. Hashem's not going to stop you. The opposite. He's going to give you breath to continue to sin. And in the end, after years and years and years of you going against him with no mercy, he'll still have mercy on you. You repent, he'll forgive everything. You don't, you'll pay for it all. Simple. Any suffering you see in the world, like my brothers and sisters right now in Israel suffering because of these 
Palestinian terrorists that come to rain terror on the head of a Jew. Why? Because we sin against God. If you want peace with the Arabs, make peace with God. It's hard to say. But we must understand this is exactly what's going on, yo. If the Jews would fix the arrogance and the pride inside of our nation. And we would be more grateful to God, more respectful. Just turn to God and say, dear God, save us. That's it. Just like that, yo. It would already be enough. It would already be enough. But you'll have Jews sit there on the sideline and say, oh, this God, he wants attention. Ah, this God wants to be praised and worshipped. What kind of a God is this? This is, And this is how, oh my God. That people like this in my family talk like this, bro. It's psychotic, bro. I don't even know how that could even be, but that's how it is. And that's what makes it so scary is that how. So what's going to happen is the Jews that will yell out to God with all their heart to show them that they know that all the suffering will go through things that a father makes his children suffer for no reason. When a father comes to punish his child, he knows it's going to hurt the child. It's for the child's own good. It's to clean him for his sins. It's to make him a better person. No problem. But it's going to even make the father suffer. So it's a double sin on our part. We're causing ourselves to suffer, which is a sin. Because why would you make yourself suffer? And then we're causing God to suffer. That's a double sin. Don't you see how bad everything negative and evil is? It's attached to death, destruction, bacteria, viruses. Ugh, everything nasty with this world, bro. And then on the side of righteousness, you see a room clean. No spiders, no spider webs, no dust, no mites, no nothing. You can smell in the air the purity of the word of God. And that's what I love about Hashem. He made the world in such a way that when you sin, it affects physical matter. I'll prove it to you. Go sin with your eyes and see if it doesn't affect your eyesight. <laughs> and the eyesight is spiritual and physical mixed, just like the sun. Because the sun feeds itself That's why it's spiritual You don't see somebody sitting there Throwing wood into the fire of the sun To keep it going It's already burning You understand? That's a miracle Shem is showing you He's all over the place bro You want to see him? See him You don't? Don't It's up to you man If I was you I would really concentrate hard And look at him And you will see Yeah you only see his back Because you can see his face and live only after you're dead will you see his face And he doesn't have a face like we have a face He'll appear as smoke He'll appear as light His word will be revealed to your mind You understand? I love you Hashem because you're the greatest I love you Hashem because you give me life I love you Hashem because you take care of me I love you Hashem because I see your hand in every single second of my life I love you, Hashem, from the minute I wake up, from the minute I go to sleep, and everything in between. I dream about you, Hashem. I love you, and I hope my nation Israel could love you half as much as I love you, or as much as I love you, or just love you to the minimum would already be good enough. You see, what you don't understand is as much as you continue to keep sinning, the more Hashem takes his focus off the enemy for he takes the focus off the enemy And puts it on you But if you would just sit And stay humble And not say a word He would take his attention And immediately focus it on the enemy And that would be a wrap for the enemy You understand? But the pride of our arrogance Prevents us from being helped by God And that hurts me Because that's hurting me I want to move to Israel I have to worry about bombs going off And running into shelters Never but that's the reality of the situation. I almost feel embarrassed, Hashem. And I'm going to say this publicly to atone if there was even a hint of a sin in what I said. I said to somebody the other day, you think I'm going to go to Israel? For what? Go to Israel for what? To run into a shelter? Who wants to go to Israel right now? And that was not right. And I remember I said to the person, I said it to I shouldn't have said that, but I'm saying it now live in front of the whole world. And I'll tell you why. And you must pay attention. One of the sins of Tisha B'Av that happened was when the Jews were decreed to stay in the desert till they all died. Well, only in God's mercy did he let our children inherit the land to bring us into Eretz Israel with Yeshua. Think about that. They just walked around the city seven times, blew the trumpet, and the walls fell. Think about it. Noxious fumes from Tophet, where they used to murder their children. 
Hashem made extra sulfur rise up and all the soldiers, 185,000 of Saint Khalib's army died in their sleep by carbon monoxide fumes. Get the point? Hashem did that through the earth. He just increased the amount of sulfur dioxide in the air, yo. That's craziness, yo. I like the way Hashem is running the world, yo. Even though sometimes, God forbid, man. <laughs> I complain out of frustration, even though I know I'm wrong. Why? Because right away a voice comes to me. You know what it says? Put your ego low. Let it go. And know that God is running the show, bro. When I study Torah, I'm happy. When I put my ego down and make peace, I'm happy. The second I get angry or upset or frustrated, even to the slightest, it brings me down. You understand? That's how in tune my soul is to God. When I'm with Him, I'm with Him 100%. But God forbid if I fall, for that 5 seconds, for that 10 minutes, for that whatever amount of frustration I got, He's not with me. And I don't blame Him. Because who wants to be around someone that's not trusting God 100%? I wouldn't want to even be around that person. That's why I'm constantly working on my ego. Constantly working on being a better person Constantly working On trying to have patience And to judge people most favorably Unless you give me a chazaka Not to Then I judge you harshly And protect my soul from the damage you could cause to it You understand? Dear God We suffered so much as a nation I call this world you shamed us. You raised our cities to the ground. You caused us to eat the flesh of our flesh. The flesh of our afterbirth. Now it's time to focus your attention. On the nations that mock you. Now it's time to focus your attention. On the nations that mock Israel. It's time for you to take all your attention. All your fury. All your wrath. And focus it on the enemy. Have mercy on your child. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on everybody I love. Have mercy on your name, Akadish Borku. Because if you keep punishing us, the other nations are gonna say to themselves, ah, God is not with them. He abandoned them. He left them. Look, we built a mosque where the temple is. He's not with them. I know you hear them saying that Hashem and I know you withhold your anger because that's justice but there's something in my heart deep pulling on my heartstrings telling me that that time of mercy for the Goyim is over yo now it's time to have mercy on us it's time to help us you see that we don't sin against you to get you angry we sin against you because we don't even know better you think if I had a chance to sit down and talk with every Jewish teenage girl that wears a bikini on the beach in Israel, that after I'm done talking with her, 80% of them, I wouldn't have an impact on them? I would guarantee, guaranteed. They're not bad people. They're just used to growing up. They see their parents just like this. And I know you know that. But at the same time, I know that when it's in the Holy Land, the sin is magnified a lot and it's dangerous. I, Eretz Israel, yo, never, ever, ever, ever speak bad about the nation of Israel, about the land of Israel. Look what God did to us when we spoke bad about the land of Israel. What do you think he's going to do to Goyim? What do you think he's going to do to the Goyim that yell and scream and shout death to Israel? You think the only reason Hashem doesn't destroy Iran is because there's good people over there. Eventually he will. And eventually you're going to see the suffering, the pain. And you know how it always comes, yo. It's like I told you, a cyclic pattern that always repeats itself. It's famine, destruction, death, and the murdering of children. That's what humbles a nation, you understand? Unfortunately. Man, Hashem, you are. <laughs> as tough as you are, that's how loving you are. How could it be? We told you with the troops of Assyria, the army of Assyria that Hashem killed, he killed them in their sleep, covered them. He could have made a fire and made them all burn and die naked and lay there and never get buried. The opposite. He allowed them all to get buried and covered. Why? Because Assyria comes from Shem. 
And Shem covered the nakedness of his father Noah. So measure for measure, God covered them when they died. You understand? That's mercy and judgment at the same time. That's God. And I praise you. And I beg you to bless me, Akadish Baruch Hu, in abundance, but not too much. Where I get complacent and get fat and kick. God forbid that I should even talk like that. I was just quoting the verse from Deuteronomy. That the Jews got fat and God forbid kicked, kicked, kicked what? Kicked God. Chas v'chalila, yo. They didn't want God part of their lives. Yo, Hashem, I'm sorry to talk like that. Yo, please forgive me. But it hurts me, Hashem, that that's how they treated you. They did it on purpose to anger you. They got fat and kicked the Torah. Wow. Oh my God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, keep me smart. I love you so much. Please forgive us, Akadish Baruch Hu. I want to bring honor to your name and say in front of the whole world, that you deserve to be praised every second you're alive. That I will bless you every moment of every second. I will bow down to your Torah at any time. I'm fasting now on Tisha B'Av because I love you. I want to feel pain in my heart, yo, like the Jews felt in the time of the Beit HaMikdash. I want to feel the suffering that they felt. Chas v'chalila, yo. Not that you could ever feel that, yo. But what I'm saying is I just want to feel Close to those that suffered Jews that were murdered For the Beit HaMikdash that was destroyed The Beit HaMikdash, yo Is such a loss It's like you have the most ah, yeah, yeah, I can't even say what kind of a loss it is Because it would be too much to say, yo to Even to like it's a great loss losing the Beit HaMikdash. When the Beit HaMikdash stood and brought glory to the honor of God, it showed the wisdom of the Jews. It performed miracles that all the nations saw and were in awe. But now because of our sins, we stripped ourselves of that glory. Hashem took it away. His most magnificent holy house, His holy palace, where the fire would rise up straight to heaven, where there would be no flies in the Beit HaMikdash, where there would be man, no, sorry, mana, mana, man, was it man, no, nana, sorry, nana, there was nana on the floor, because there was a gathering of a lot of people in small spaces, so in order to clean the air, they put nana on the floor. That's why whenever I feel like I'm getting a little bit of the sniffles, the tickle in my throat, whatever it may be, Right away, I go right for the peppermint oil. And it's been very helpful. I thought this was because of you. Not because of the peppermint oil. You give the peppermint oil the life and the ability to heal. And I appreciate you for that. Even though they hid the book of cures. Cheskia hid it. Still some of the knowledge is out there in the world. And thank you for that. I thought this was Dear God. Please forgive the nation of Israel for going against you, Hashem. Please forgive the nation of Israel for not being respectful to you, Hashem. Please forgive the nation of Israel for not even mourning about the destruction of the first Beit HaMikdash, the second Beit HaMikdash, the people in Beitar, and the nation of the spies that were killed in the desert. They couldn't enter the land. May this day be dedicated to them. May we have a moment of silence. Like right now, I'm about to do a moment of silence to let them know that my heart is with them and to let them know that I know that they were punished for their sins and they will go to heaven. Guaranteed, the nation of the spies will be led to Eretz Israel with Dumosha Ravenu. That's who's going to lead them. That's why he died right there by the mountain of Nebo by Moab. Right there he died. Why? Because he's going to lead the nation that died in the desert into the land of Israel. Think about it. Aaron, Moshe, and Miriam. 
all three of them didn't land in the land of his own. They were buried in areas to atone for the sins that the Jews committed. The golden calf. I love the nation of Israel so much I won't even speak about the golden calf. I'm just going to say when you abandon God and put your faith in metal and stone and wood your end will be horrible. When you rise your ego up above man to act like you're better than them and you're not you're going to suffer. When Hashem wants to humble a man he could really humble a man. Just know that God is watching. That he sees the sins of every single individual. He will help those that deserve to be helped. And in the end, God forbid, he will abandon those that deserve to be abandoned. Be clever, be smart. And have the esoteric knowledge to know that when you stick to God and his word, for sure you will inherit the gates of heaven. I love you, Hashem. And I want you to take me out of here and bring me to the land of Israel to give me a nice place to live quiet where I can have some peace. Even if I have to, God forbid, run into a shelter to always be with me everywhere I am to introduce me to my wife to bring children into the world that will scream from the mountaintops how much they love you, ready to die and sacrifice their soul like King David was. Those kind of a Jew. Those kind of Jews. Those are the Jews that I want to give birth to. I'll always love you, Akadu Shkorofu. And I know you'll always guide me in the right path to always choose the right way because I gave you my heart and I gave you my soul and I dedicated my life to glorifying your name and for that I'll be blessed and I welcome your blessing and I will continue to fight even harder to bring honor to your name I love you for now and forever Kaddish Baruch Hu. Bless the nation of Israel. Protect us, love us, adore us, and be with us always. Amen. I love you, Hashem.